I got the Fujifilm X-H2S at launch, so this review is after more than one year and some months. I used this camera in so many locations and for so many things, and today I want to share with you my experience with it. Hello everyone, my name is Andrei Dima, I'm a professional travel photographer and video maker, and today I'm going to talk about my experience with the X-H2S. After heavy use. I use this camera with cine lenses, anamorphic lenses, Fujifilm, third party, rigged it up, used it in rain, in dusty conditions, took it hiking, traveled with it in many locations, and the one thing I was disappointed is that Fujifilm did not release the features the new GFX camera has for the X-H2S yet. We've been asking for those features for a long time, and I think they should have been already released for its flagship APS-C camera, but maybe I am just nitpicking. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Otherwise, it is a great camera, super well built, it sometimes reminds me of my Nikon D850, well put together and tough. I also have the X-T5, which I recently sent off for warranty, because I had the loose screen since day one, and my shutter speed dial broke, and I had that for almost one year. The X-H2S hold up much better, no scratches, no nothing. The dials work like new, the screen the same, nothing happened to the rubber or card door, everything is in top shape, and I don't know what Fujifilm did with this camera but I have no dust on the sensor, I used around 25 different lenses on this camera, it should have some dust but it is clean, it's magic or pure luck. You can feel while holding the camera that you can trust it and use it without the fear that something might happen and that is a liberating feeling. The top screen, first I thought it is useless, but after using the camera for so long I started to appreciate it, especially in low light. The difference between the X-T5 and the X-H2S is not that big when it comes to size, the X-H2S is just thicker but by no means a lot bigger. Both cameras are very nice to hold and use for longer periods of time. I never had an overheating issue, I got the notice that the camera got hot but I was shooting 4K ProRes HQ at 60 frames per second and it was the beginning of summer in Spain, so a bit hot, but that was it. The photo image quality, what can I say, it is a Fujifilm camera, the colors are beautiful if you shoot JPEG or RAW, the colors are a bit warmer than the ones on the X-T5 or the X-T4 and I like that, it reminds me of my X-E2 or X-Pro2. Regarding the resolution, I never felt the difference between the X-H2S 26 megapixels and the X-T5's 40, yeah there is a difference if you pixel peep, and I prefer higher megapixel cameras for my work, but overall I am really happy with the results from the X-H2S. The dynamic range is very good for an APS-C stacked sensor, the shadow detail can be recovered better, in my opinion, compared to the X-T4 at lower ISOs. In low light, again for an APS-C stacked sensor, it performs very well in my opinion until ISO 3200. 6400 is usable but in certain conditions, but you won't go that far if you use fast lenses like the Viltrox 27mm f1.2 or the new XF f1.4 WR lenses from Fujifilm, it all depends on you. Autofocus for photography, I think it is the best Fujifilm has on any camera. I use the X-T5 and I can see a difference especially after the latest updates. It is faster and more reliable than the rest of the cameras. Still not perfect, missing shots by slightly back focusing, but things have improved. The so-called AI tracking works well with animals and humans, eye tracking seems to work fine and at longer distances than before, but as I said earlier, sometimes it is off. I know it depends on the lenses you use, but it happened with linear motor lenses from Fujifilm and other lenses. 
Eye beast is something that Fujifilm needs to improve, not for photography, and I think that is the issue. The eye beast in Fujifilm cameras is photocentric, and that is why in video it's not that good if you move the camera. When it comes to video, here is where this camera excels. It has almost everything you want except for those features I talked about earlier. I can live without vector scopes and anamorphic disquees because I use an external recorder, but I really want touch tracking. The fact that you can shoot ProRes internally combined with Fujifilm colors is just a joy to edit in post. Great shadow roll-off and highlights roll-off. You have so many codec options, frame rates and resolutions to satisfy almost any content creator. I recently tested a Nikon Z8, amazing camera, but the files just didn't look like the ones on Fujifilm. What can I say, I prefer the Fuji look and colors. But after testing the Z8, I feel like Fujifilm needs to update and work more on their video autofocus. I know it is a big difference between the cameras, but I also tested the Nikon ZF and that has better autofocus than the X-H2S. I'm not saying the autofocus is bad, actually it got better with recent updates and if you use a good lens, you will be happy with it but it is still not as reliable and smooth as the one on other brands. Enough about autofocus, it seems everyone is talking only about autofocus. This camera has so much more to offer than just autofocus. You could shoot a movie with it. In my opinion, there is so much value for money when it comes to this camera now that it dropped in price. Speaking about great features, f 2 is just amazing for a video, 14.2 stops of dynamic range and the files clean so nice in post. 6.2K open gate is such a great feature to have, from its benefit with anamorphic lenses to the fact that you can better reframe your shots in post. The X-H2S is a super customizable camera, I love that about it. Some people will not like that. You have so many options for almost everything, but I like that. This is such a great camera that in my opinion needs a bit more love from Fujifilm. The video and photo features are amazing for a camera that costs now only $2,300 and I think in time it is going to get better and better. I loved using it in my travels alongside my X-T5. I still think it is the best APS-C camera ever made and maybe the best camera Fujifilm ever made. But it still needs a bit more support. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And if you want to support the channel even more, use the links in the description. See you next time.